Hello guys, welcome to our class for today. Uh, I hope you are doing fine. And today we are going to be looking at uh, vibration in spring in, in, in strings. Okay, so this is uh, Never Mind Science Tutors Online. I remain your online video tutor. And please, if you have not subscribed to our channel, please I encourage you to subscribe. Click on the notification bell so that whenever we upload a new video, YouTube will notify you. Is that okay? So I hope you have your writing materials ready so that we can go straight to our class for today. So as I've said, we are looking at vibration in strings. Don't forget we have started, we have this we have been discussing wave motion um, before now. So for today we are looking at vibration in strings. Is that okay? So if you are ready, let's just go to the class for today. So before we go straight to the vibration and string proper, there are some things that we need to be familiar with. Okay, so these terms are very important as we progress in this class. So one of the first one is resonance. So what is resonance? Resonance is when a body is set into vibration or into oscillation at its own natural frequency as a result of the impulse it receives from another oscillating body or system. So you can actually demonstrate this if you bring a vibrating turning fork close to a body of water in a glass, you find that the water in the glass will also start to vibrate without the turning fork touching the water. So that means that if the vibrating turning fork has set the water into oscillation. That type of oscillation is what is called resonance. Oh, is that okay? So that is resonance. Then beats. Beats are produced by two sources of sound of nearly but not exactly the same frequencies but similar amplitudes. They are caused by interference. Beats are normally used to fine tune musical instruments. Okay, so if you want a musical instrument to sound very well, you use the beat to fine tune the musical instrument. Okay, then we have musical notes. Musical notes are produced by bodies under regular vibrations at constant frequencies. Because when you say music, music is a sound that is uh, good to hearing. Okay, so that sound that is good to hearing comes out at constant frequency and it has regular vibration but noise does not come out with constant frequency so that's why we call that one noise it's a disturbance to the hearing okay then we have pitch pitch the pitch of a note is the position of the note in a musical scale this depends on the frequency of the sound low pitch equals to low frequency or low frequency is equals to low pitch so we want to know that the frequency of a sound does not change when the sound travels from one medium to another so these are points that we need to take note of and also the quality or timber of a note the quality or timber of a note produced by a musical instrument depends on the combination of overtones or harmonies now, overtones or harmonics are known as notes of higher frequency than the fundamental notes. The fundamental note is the lowest frequency that a musical instrument can produce. Okay, either a stress string of a guitar or a closed pipe or an open pipe the fundamental note or the fundamental frequency is a note of the lowest uh, frequency overtones and harmonics are frequencies of are higher frequencies okay they are notes of higher frequencies so as we go along we are going to see how you can derive equations for the different harmonics or overtones in a stretch string right so that is where we are going to now so when a string 
is fixed at both ends and it is set into vibration by plucking the center it will produce stationary wave okay so when it produces stationary wave the first frequency that is produced is called the fundamental frequency and this frequency is the lowest frequency that can be obtained from a stress string from a, a stress string that vibrates in one loop so multiples of this uh, fundamental frequency is what are called overtones or harmonics so for a stress string that is set into vibration the first harmonics or the fundamental frequency is gotten from this equation now what this equation tells you that the length of the string for the first harmonic is equals to half of a wavelength okay so wavelength is equals to 2 times l and from our wave equation we have that velocity is equals to lambda f and f is equals to what v all over lambda so if you substitute into this equation we have that v will be equals to 2l remember that lambda is equals to 2l so this fo this first frequency is equals to the fundamental frequency and that is exactly what we have here right so this is the fundamental frequency and this fundamental frequency is the first harmonics for a vibrating string so from now we're now going to look at other higher frequencies that can be obtained when a string vibrates in either two loops or three loops or four loops as the case may be all right so this is second harmonic the one we did the first loop is first harmonics this is second harmonic and this is the first overtone of the fundamental frequency so as i have said before overtones are higher frequencies or they are multiple integral of the fundamental frequency then there's something i want you to note and that is that an octave of a note is equals to twice the fundamental frequency please take note of this this is a typical jam question this is a typical jam question the octave of a note is twice the fundamental frequency so for the second harmonics of first overtone this string will vibrate in two loops and when it vibrates in two loops the length of this the string will be equal to the wavelength so from our equation we, we had a v is equals to lambda f and that f which in this case is f1 first over two is equals to v all over lambda so if you compare this equation to the first harmonics we gave us a v is equals to 2l you will discover that if you multiply this by 2 this will give you v all over l so which means that this first overtone is equal to twice the fundamental frequency so f1 is equals to 2f0 okay so and that is exactly what we have here all right so this is the first uh, overtone for a vibrating string so we are going to check the equation now for the second overtone so for the second overtone it means that the string is vibrating in three loops and when it is vibrating in three loops the length of the string will be equal to what three all over two of the wavelengths length will be equal to three over 2 of uh, lambda so here lambda will be equals to 2l all over 3 right then from this our equation that v is equals to lambda f f 2 
which is for the second over 20 cos of v all over lambda. So substitute for lambda I told this equation where v all over 2L multiplied by 3 over 1. So that gives us 3V all over 2L. So if you compare this with, uh, so your F2 is equal to 3V over 2L. If you compare this to the um, fundamental frequency, which is V all over 2L, you will find out that the second over 2 is equal to 3 times, uh, you find out that F2 is equal to 3 times F0. So that is exactly what we have here. So the second over 2 is tries the fundamental frequency. Alright? Second over tone is tries the fundamental frequency. So in summary, this is what we have got in a fundamental frequency of first harmonic is equal to V over 2A. The first over tone is twice the fundamental frequency. Second over tone is twice the fundamental frequency. Okay? So that is what we have gotten so far. Then the velocity of a transverse wave. It's another area that we need to that we want to look at the velocity of a transverse wave okay so the velocity of a transverse wave along a stretched string of tension t and mass per unit length m is given by this relation okay so which means that the velocity is directly proportional to the square root of the tension and inversely proportional to the square root of the mass per unit length. And this now leads us to loss of vibration in string. For the loss of vibration in string, the frequency of a vibrating string of tension T, length L and mass M, are, will be this loss. It will be this law. The first law still that the frequency is that proportional to, or inverse proportional to the length. So you can equally write it as F inversely proportional to 1 over L is equal to F times L is equal to K. Then for the second one, F is that proportional to the square root of tension. That is F is that proportional to the square root of tension when the length and the mass are constant okay so this you can also write as f equals to um, k square root t so k will be equals to f all over square root t so all this equation you can use them to solve for various problems depending on the variable that you are giving now if you combine these equations together if you combine these equations together you are going to have that f that is proportional if that is proportional to 1 over l which is this right then that is proportional to the tension and if that is proportional to the square root of the mass or it can be written like this so Having known this, if you bring the equation for the fundamental frequency for a stress string that is sent to vibration, FO, we got it to be equals to V all over 2L. So if you substitute for V here, you are going to have that 1 all over 2L multiplied by square root T all over M. Then for the first over 2, we had a V all over L. That one is all over L. So if you substitute here, you are going to have 1 over L multiplied by square root of T all over M, which is this one. Okay? So this is this and this is this. Then for the second over 2 that we had is 3 times the first over 2, which is uh, this. So multiply by 
that you are going to have 3 all over 2L or multiply by square root T all over M. So these are the equations for a stress string that had either constant tension, mass, or length, as the case may be. Is that okay? So those are the equations, and now we are going to use these equations to solve some problems so that we see how the equations are applied. Okay, so let's look at some problems quickly. So this is question number one. In this particular question, it says that a vibrator of frequency 60 Hz is used in generating transverse stationary waves in a long thin wire. If the average distance between successive nodes on the wire is 45 centimeters, find the speed of the transverse waves in the wire. Now, the point I want you to take note of is the average distance between successive nodes. Now, in this particular question, you are given frequency to equals to 60 hertz. You are given length to be equals to 45 centimeters, which is equal to 0 0.45 meters. Now, when you look at the question, it says the average distance between successive nodes. And you know that the distance between successive nodes for vibration on string is equal to what? It's equal to half of a wavelength. So we should that L is equal to half of wavelength. So wavelength will now be equal to 2, uh, which is equal to 2 times 0 0.45. So this will give you 0 0.90 meters. Okay, so this will be the value of your wavelength, 0 0.90 meter. From V is equals to lambda F, we have that V will be equals to 0 0.9 multiplied by the frequency that is given to you, which is 60. So by the time you work with it out, you are going to have that velocity is equal to um, 54 meters per second. So this is actually a jam question, so it's not supposed to take more than one minute to complete the solving of this question. Just for you to understand that the distance between successive nodes on a wave is equal to half of a wavelength. Remember this drawing we had? Okay, remember. Okay, so this is a node, and this is also a node. So this distance for our fundamental frequency we had is equal to lambda over 2. All right? So once you understand this one, it becomes easy for you to solve this type of problem. Okay, how this one is clear. So let's go to another one. This one says, find the frequencies of the first three harmonies of a piano string of length 1.5 meter if the velocity of the wave on the string is 120 meters per second so for this particular one you are giving length to be equals to 1.5 meters you are giving velocity to be equals to 120 meters per second now for a vibrating string the first harmonics we had that the first harmonic f0 which is fundamental frequency is equals to v all over 2l so if you substitute into this equation you're going to have 1 over 20 over 2 times 1.5 so by the time you work this out you are going to have that if first harmonic is equals to 40 hertz Remember, we said that the second harmonic is twice the fundamental frequency. So the second harmonic will be 40 times 2, which gives us 80 hertz. I hope you are following. The third harmonic is equal to 3 times 
the fundamental frequency. So that gives you 40 times 3, and that is equals to 120 hertz. So basically, that is what this question requires, and this is also a junk question, and it should not take you more than one minute to solve. Okay, so I hope you followed as I went through that question. So let's do another question here too. Okay, so this one says that a plus string produces a note of 200 hertz when its length is 1.50 meters. Determine the frequency of the note produced with a length of 0.75 meters, assume constant tension. Okay, so remember our equation for from the laws of a vibrating string. Here, you are given that if the first frequency is equals to 20. 200 hertz then you are also giving length the first length l1 to be 1.50 meters you are giving l2 to be equal to 0 0.75 meters f2 is what you are looking for you are looking for F2. So from this our equation, we had that um, from this law that F is inversely proportional to L. This one is equals to F L is equals to constant. So we can actually write this question as F1 multiplied by L1 is equals to F2 multiplied by L2. So here we are looking for F2. So let's make F2 the subject of the formula. So that will give us F1 multiplied by L1 all over L2. So substituting into this equation, we'll have 200 multiplied by 1.50 all divided by 0 0.75 okay so by the time you work this out with your calculator you have that f2 is equals to 400 hertz so that is just how to use this equation to solve so depending on the variable that you are looking for, you should know which of the equation to use to solve so that you can have your answers readily. Is that okay? So we are going straight to your test, your understanding page. So this is test your understanding page. Please go through these questions. The are just a reflection of all that we have discussed okay so go to them try your hands on them you can check your other tests that you have right so that you are you can gain a better understanding so guys thank you so much for your time and before i leave if you have not subscribed to our channel please subscribe to the channel click on the notification bell so that whenever we upload a new video youtube will notify you is that okay you can reach us through the whatsapp number that i showing in your screen and then if you have any challenge just let us know we will sit together and see how we can help you out right so we want to make sure that you have a better understanding of physics as a subject so that physics will become one of your most loved subjects okay that's our aim so thanks for your time and please invite your friends to come and enjoy what you are enjoying on youtube give us a like give us a thumbs up right so that you can encourage us so thanks so much and uh, we hope to see you in our next class thanks